<laughs> Hi guys. Y'all seem to be seem to like that Mario clap thing, so I figure I'd just keep doing it. What's going on guys? Um A lot of you guys uh wanted to know uh where am I being, what am I doing, things of that nature. People who ask me on Discord, um you ask me during my live streams, things of that nature, and I figured so what the hell I'll get to it. Um I have been dealing with a mental health issue. Um I full disclosure as you guys know I, I battle with depression, I battle with PTSD, I battle with um ADHD and a few other uh ooh, squirrel moments, you know. Um I'm also in the process of trying to find a medical malpractice lawyer uh, to help me with complications from my COVID jab. Uh, as you guys know, um, I've shown my card several times on the stream, I am fully vaccinated and I've been having nothing but issues since I got the jab. Um, case in point, I got the jab just before uh, the end of last year, literally the day of the beginning day of this year, I had a heart attack. Uh, and. Uh, been having blood clot issues and a whole bunch of other issues and it sucks it really sucks and I am convinced and you cannot convince me otherwise that it is jab related um, and so I'm trying to find uh, me a medical malpractice lawyer to help me put together a case whether it be class action whether it be individual I don't care I want to sue the NHS I want to sue the British government. I want to sue the World Health Organization. I want to sue Pfizer. I'm going to. Um, because someone needs to pay. Someone needs to be brought to justice over this. Whether it be Alchi Fauci um, or whoever. Someone needs to pay for this. Uh, for the torture and torment that happened to the entire race for two whole years. Okay? People need to start owning up and taking responsibility for the damage that they've done to their people. We need to start holding our leaders responsible. We do. We just do. Um, so that aside, um, I want I want to talk about some upcoming projects I've got planned for the channel, um, namely electronics based. Um, as you guys know, I do a lot with things like uh, Ponagotchis. 3D printers that are going off right now, things of that nature, and a lot of people keep asking me. Uh, they're intimidated uh, by 3D printers. They're intimidated by uh, upcoming newer technology. Um, Bitcoin, case in point. A lot of people are, are intimidated about crypto and investments and how that all works. And so what I plan on doing is I plan on doing a dumbed down, uh, um, simplified, um, video series to help people who who are i wouldn't say dumb or silly or or whatever but are, are uneducated when it comes to technology namely when i explain to them about a raspberry pi they assume the actual pie i'm assuming um or the cake or whatever uh, i'm talking about the single board computer now this is a raspberry pi you're thinking no it's not it's my right it's, you know, this is one of my Raspberry Pis. Uh, this is running a Ponagotchi. If you don't know what a Ponagotchi is, uh, I will do a video on that. Just let me know in the comment section if you want more information on what a Ponagotchi is. Uh, case in point, I want to make the content for you guys. Like I've, I've even started designing and 3D printing cases for Raspberry Pis, uh, things of that nature. I've got, um, this is a game controller board uh, for a, a Raspberry Pi. Um, this will turn a Raspberry Pi into a Game Boy or a Game Gear or even a Steam Deck. You can technically... Oh, could you turn a Raspberry Pi into a Steam Deck? I don't know. I just got a YouTube video content idea. You just see me get a YouTube, YouTube idea while recording a YouTube video. Uh, but basically this one is a little hat It sits on the board. This is what called they're called hats hats sit on top of your Raspberry Pi board Through the GPIO pin connector and this one has a little joystick And it has buttons it has little two shot it has shoulder buttons up top and four buttons right here So in essence I could turn this into a game gear, but the screen is a little bit tiny You can get bigger screens of course it costs more money. This is just a proof of concept prototype that I want to do. Um, so I'm going to be building me a little mobile uh, 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 mobile game 
playing little thing where I can play Game Boy games, where I can play um, legitimately, of course, um, where I can play, um, you know, just a little emulator station where I can emulate um, uh, Atari STs, RM Nimbuses. If you're British, you know what an RM Nimbus is. If you don't know what an RM Nimbus is and you're British, what are you doing with your life? Uh, RM Nimbus was a computer manufacturing company that made computers for public schools here in the UK. Um, I remember the RM Nimbus in my old primary school classroom where it taught us uh, simple things like C, sharp, uh, coding, basic. Oh my god, basic. Oh, uh, I'm that old. It's called an RM Nimbus. Just Google RM Num, N U M Bus, B U S. R U M Numbus, or Nimbus for short. Um, and I would love to own one. I would. I would love to own one just, just for nostalgia. I would love to own it, have it in my corner, just walk up to it, switch it on, and just, just take me back to when I was like five, six years old. Um, same as the Commodore cassette deck. Um, there was even a Kevin Keegan. If you don't, Kevin Keegan was a football manager and a football player here in the UK. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was even a Kevin Keegan a branded Commodore 64 limited edition thing. I remember having it when I lived at my at my nan's house. I had a pre-wired monitor, pre-wired keyboard, and a cassette deck. And you'd have to type like slash run, enter, play the, hit, hit play when it told you to hit play on the cassette deck, and it would play the cassettes. Um, even had a, 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 a joy pin, a joystick pin port, and I used to stick my old um, Sega Master System controller in there because I never had the single joystick, regular joystick, like an Atari joystick. Um, God, I'm, it's taking me way back to when I was a kid now. Um, but the point is, uh, I'm also starting to work on some personal projects, uh, personal passion passion projects. Uh, one of which is I'm saving up my, my, my finances to buy myself a car. In case in point, it is a specific car. It's a Ford Mondeo. The reason why I want the Ford Mondeo is because I'm going to be using that car as a test platform as well as it being my daily driver. Uh, I like Fords. I'm a Ford guy. I've been a Ford guy since I was eight years old, nine years old. Uh, my mum's my mum will dr prefers Volvos. My brother prefers German cars. Uh, my sister prefers anything that drives. <laughs> but me personally, I've always been a Ford fan. I've always been a Ford guy. Um, when I lived in America, I owned a 68 Mustang, I owned a 66 F100, I owned an 86 Bronco, I owned a 2001 Expedition, I owned 150s, I owned tons of Ford vehicles. My Ford Focus even. I, I, I loved those cars, they lasted me, they, 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 they're just really good cars. They just, I get a lot of people are Chevy guys or Dodge or whatever. Me personally, I'm a Ford guy. That passion project aside, this right here is another one. Um, I can't go into too much detail about it just yet, guys, because I want to save this for the actual build idea, the vlog, and, and, and whatnot for it. But um, I'm going to be working on an electronical device to help people with spinal injuries. Um, and so, long story short, uh, as you guys know, my ex-wife, uh, Michelle, uh, lives in Utah. She has spi uh, lumbar spinal stenosis. Um, that's where her discs are crumbling, literally her, her cartilage and her bone discs are literally just turned to dust in her spine. And a friend of mine who's into biohacking, if you understand what biohacking is, biohacking is the ability to use... Uh, um, current technologies and future technologies not like like 25 20 year 25 25 but existing current technologies to be used in ways to help you biologically hack your own body i.e uh, the use of certain herbs chemical you, you can even do like dna resequencing things of that nature well he got me started on this one project uh to help him with it I was doing the hardware side, he was doing the software side, the coding side. Well, unfortunately, he passed away. But I'm still going to be working on a project myself. So I'm, I've been learning Python, I've been learning uh, some coding and whatnot. That's why I got the Ponagotchi, because Ponagotchi runs on Python. I literally was using this to help me with 
this project. They they all work in tandem. Well, this project is designed to turn your brain waves into Bluetooth signal to bypass spinal injuries. That's as far as I can go into it. Um, because I can't really go into much more detail about it because if I can get the prototype working, I'm gonna need the, pro the prototype to file for patents because I genuinely think that this could literally help me financially put more investment into other projects and vice versa. I'm also working on custom building my own tablet. I do own a regular manufactured tablet right here. Um, this is from, this is a, 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 an RCA clone here in England called Venture. This is a Venture Challenger. Um, there's no hacked ROM file for it or anything right, as of yet. Um, but I have a second one, and the second one I bought, someone had hacked it, well, tried to hack it, but they bricked the ARM processor in doing so, because they eradicated the ROM file. This is the board. It is dead. Dead as a door now. Um, I could try and flash it, but the point is, I don't own the file. I can't pull it off of this one, because it just won't pull for some reason. So this, to me, is dead. But I repurposed the parts. So I've got the battery. Now in theory, I could take this battery and add it to that and technically double the life expectancy of this tablet. But why do that? If this tablet is already restricted and limited and, and, and whatnot. So I figured, what the hey, I'm going whole hog. So I've got the battery. And here I've got an entire list of things I've taken. This is the touch sensor screen. So you ever, ever wonder when you like, touch stuff on a screen? Well, this tablet has it separated. So this is the screen. I can actually even plug this screen into another outsource, okay, and have it as a secondary screen. I could, in theory, take this screen and put it in the front case of my computer and have it display temperature sensor, stuff like that, uh, 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 Download strength, you name it. I could use it as a small little internal panel and customize the computer screen if I wanted, but that would be a waste. That would be a waste of a nice little 10 inch panel. Okay, so I figured that bear in mind, yes, I can already technically pre buy um, a touch sensitive panel uh, for the Raspberry Pi, but they're fucking expensive when I've got these two right here. So I'm going to try and get these two as a passion. Again, this is a passion project. I'm going to try and get these working. Okay along with a Raspberry Pi. I'm thinking I'm going to go with the, a, a Pi 3 or a Pi 4 just because I need the, the oomph in the RAM. A regular Pi 0 or a 0W or even a Pico just won't do it um, because I need the, the, the RAM. I need the uh, processing power of the, arm, of the ARM processor itself because this is a quad core. I believe it's a quad core, yeah. This is a quad core. I want something at least equivalent to this. So that means Pi 4, Pi, uh, Pi 3, Pi 4. Um, Pico's not going to do it. Um, Zero's not going to do it. Zero W2, yeah, I'd have Wi-Fi. Great, but guess what? I can get a Wi-Fi module. I could even I, get a breakout board and build my own Wi-Fi module. 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So it would be better than what even this could do. I could even put in a SIM card adapter onto a Pi and take, go to my, my phone company and say, I would like an extra SIM card, please, and put it in here, into my homemade tablet, so I can actually even make phone calls. Do you see what I'm saying? I can get past certain restrictions of owning certain things. So, point is, this is another passion project idea, and it's recycling e-waste. Otherwise, this would have just gone straight into the garbage. Straight into the rubbish, and that's not what I want. So what I'll do is I'll do a cost analysis as I'm doing the project and realize, okay, would it be cheaper for me to buy a pre-made touch-sensitive screen that's 10, 10 inch? Or would it be more cost-effective to reuse this? I mean, I, I could, by all standards, just put this up on eBay and sell this. It's, it's a fully working touch sensitive screen for the, 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 and it's not just for the venture, venture. It will work with a whole host of different tablets. So I could throw it up on eBay as used parts, in 
I'm gonna probably get what five, ten, fifteen bucks for it. Who cares? Uh, or I can put it together and try to make a passion project where it involves custom building my own tablet from scratch using you know whatever Linux distribution I want or Android distribution I want. I can I mean I could custom build an Android for it or whatever. So. But like I said, this is just some of the passion projects I've, I I want to do. I, I I'm going. To, I mean, this is literally a IPS, uh, a Bose IPS 10, 10.1 inch panel. This is a a really good panel. Why put it to waste? I mean, yeah, like I said, I could bung it in the front of my computer and make my computer look cool. You know, and make it stand out and look techy and ooh great. But why would I get more use of it? turning it into a tablet yeah i've got a tablet down there but that's a basic generic limited tablet i could make my own kali linux uh, a tablet you know have a bluetooth module in here have cell phone module in here have data logging and and, and various other things hell i could even take a ponagachi and put it on here and walk around having a, a, a really big ass ponagachi Sky's the limits. Only my Ponegachi would have a touch sensor, Bluetooth, 2.4, 4 gig, you know, uh, 2.4, 5 gig, cell phone even, and had the ability to, 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 to do handshakes and various other things and deauth and, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. It'd be a really cool little pen testers thing. And it even comes with its own external Wi-Fi, uh, 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 external antenna. So I'm not stuck using a, a Raspberry Pi's antenna. Because the casing is still good. I literally still have the entire case. So I can even reuse the enclosure. It's win all around. So that's one of the passion projects I've got doing where I, I'm taking e-waste, where I'm taking broken items and, and sorting them out. I'm even gonna be showing you guys how I, how I take older things like cell phones broken cell phones this cell phone's got a cracked screen i'm not sure if you can see it on the video but yeah th this this video has got an entire cracked screen the touch touch sensor of it's great it's just the external glass but you can't buy the external glass separately because this one has a built-in fingerprint sensor like the apple iphone whatever kind of thing but this isn't apple this is this is android so i need to buy this uh screen separately so i'm going to do a video on replacing the screen as well as the battery because i have the replacement battery for it um, but this runs on an American GSM. This runs on an American GSM. And because these are my old phones that I had when I lived in America. So I'm going to try and swap them out, the band sensors on them, and get them working on British. Or even have them unlocked worldwide. So if I go stateside for a vacation or whatever, or, or, or whatnot, I can truly just put pop in an American SIM chip. And I'm good. Or dual SIM them. And that way they'll work on either network that I want. So there's just some ideas I can do as, as projects. Um, another project I've got going on is I've got an old Dell Inspiron uh, motherboard that I have been jerry-rigging repeatedly. It's the first computer I bought actually when I first moved back to the state, uh, to the UK. And I, you know, I, I bought some more RAM for it. I bought an, a better graphics card for it. But the point was. Um, I was exceeding the, the case, the chassis that it came with. So I put it in a different case. I realized pro pro proprietary cooler, proprietary power supply, proprietary USB. And so I started looking at ways of buying adapters or, or, or making adapters to get rid of those so that I could put it in a regular PC case. Well, I've almost done that now. I've got a power supply adapter in there, sorted it out. I'm working on modifying the front panel for it so that I can actually hook it up to a regular computer front panel. Um, so once that's done, that's gonna be a separate passion project because I'm gonna be using that computer to host a seven days to die server for everyone on the Twitch and the Discord. So if you guys wanna play seven days to die on a dedicated server, we're gonna physically have a dedicated server. I might even throw a Minecraft server on there yet. I don't know. So again, I might even use it for an internal uh, uh, network 
for me to host downloads and various other things and common programs I, I constantly download and use uh, a case in point like CCleaner not, I don't use it for a while I use Gary's utilities now so Gary's um, Chrome Firefox you know because the first the only thing in Explorer is good for is downloading another browser okay things of that nature just just basics maybe even some Linux distros on there that I know I'm gonna have to grab again like like uh, uh, Kali uh, uh, Parrot stuff like that uh, Red, Debian Red Hat you know uh, Mint even um, or maybe just use it as as a, a little processing tower for a GPT you know throw, throw a little throw a graphics card in there that it can use the CUDA cores with yeah it will, it, it will take a while to respond but I'll have my own GPT you know I'll have my own little chatbot to help me you know kind of vice versa or maybe even use it as a Linux hub so that when I come home with my Ponogotchis or my tablet or whatever it connects to it immediately starts downloading all the log files that I can run it through hash rates things of that nature and then upload it and, and, and there's tons of different projects I have planned that I'm going to do I also have a ton of video content where I've been painting miniatures and I want to get those edited and uploaded but I'm a one one man band I I have to I, I'm doing everything by myself um, so I'm kind of shooting out an appeal if any of you guys out there do video editing or no video editing or want to help um, please reach out to me on the discord I would greatly appreciate it if I can offload a little bit just something that would be amazing because I am trying to get a lot of stuff done um, I can't plan the projects build the projects you know film the projects as build slash film the projects edit the projects and get the updates to you guys all by myself I need to start offloading some of the work to other people and some of you guys I trust implicitly you know some my moderators I trust implicitly implicitly uh, Kelly Victor uh, crypto Warhammer you know you guys I trust implicitly with everything uh, 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 pandemics I trust implicitly and I'm I want you guys to understand that I am trying to do this by myself and I am a one-man band and but I want to stick to a schedule of Mondays Wednesdays Fridays so I want to get some content up for you guys Mondays is definitely going to be my coffee time with Cobras uh, where I explain what happened from the week prior so you guys can catch up Wednesdays is going to be project days where I'm doing it where I'm doing up like an update video on the projects and Fridays is when the videos of those projects go up so Mondays I talk about what, what happened past weeks you can catch up Wednesdays is when we're talking about how far we are in the projects and Fridays is when we actually do the projects Does that make sense because Tuesdays when uh, Tuesdays Thursdays and the weekends I'm doing schooling I'm doing online schooling for again uh, Linux um, blender and a few other few, few other things I'm learning um, as well as I would like to have a bit of a social life um, you know I've got a 21 year old daughter I want to go see um, you know I, I, I'm currently single so I don't have a girlfriend I kind of want to change that no offense but you know feeding your keyboard gets tiring <laughs> so does it mean I want to get that on the dating scene no because like I said I've got I've got partners uh, as you guys know I'm polyamorous I've got partners but they're all based in the US and I'm in the UK uh I, I miss, as they say, go out, touch grass. I miss touching someone's ass. <laughs> yeah, you get the point. Um, sing, being single sucks, but at the same time, it's actually quite peaceful. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I'm enjoying my peace. I don't want people to interrupt my peace. Uh, so this is why I need to move out of, get away from the cities, and find just a small little town where people will just leave me the fuck alone. Um, that's that's my my, I, my ideal thing is moving more up north of England or better yet just leave England and go back to America where people do leave you the fuck alone I don't care if I'm living in a trailer okay nothing wrong with living in a trailer okay there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer okay? I've lived in a trailer there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer nothing wrong nothing wrong with that okay but I 
I need to think of my mental health, you know, and creating, doing these these projects, doing these passion projects, doing these, you know, and stuff helps me. It does help me. It gives me a creative outreach. It it means I don't have to dwell on the dark thoughts that go on in my head sometimes. You know, uh, there are times when my depression gets so bad I don't even get out of bed. Okay, let me make that abundantly clear. I am not okay. Okay, I am not okay. That's the first time I've publicly acknowledged it. That I am not okay. I am in programs like TILS, uh, which is for the military, uh, things of that nature. Now, again, a lot of people still to this day think I, would ne I never served. If I never served, why am I on? Why am I with Tills? They've looked up my military record. They've looked up my history. Granted, some of it's redacted, some of it isn't. My therapist recently got a hold of a copy of an unredacted after-action report that I was involved in, and her only words was, "I am so sorry." She literally felt sorry for me, and because of that, I now need to get a new therapist because therapists are not supposed to be your friend they're not supposed to know you they're not supposed to to feel sorry for you or any of that shit therapists are supposed to be neutral third party okay the moment your therapist starts thinking or feeling anything for you you need a new therapist as much as that sucks to say it's the truth um, I joke about some things that happened in my life because if I don't laugh about it I'll cry and I don't mean just one or two little single movie tears I mean I will be a snivelling ball of useless shit in the corner and I will stay there because my brain will be in lock my, my brain will literally feel like this bricked tablet my brain will get bricked and I'm not I'm I'm about as useful to as I'm 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 no use to anyone. Anyway, this video's been going on for too long. It's done. Deuces, I will see you in the next one.